Okay, good evening. Um, so I apologize for the break in the videos, um, just daycare and trying to get everything to work out. So the last time we're really talking about um, <clears throat> a lot of different things in terms of research as well. And I'm happy to kind of walk through research processes a little bit more. If you have something you want to see in that vein, just uh, shoot me an email and uh, I'm happy to try to clear that up. You may not be really familiar with how to do the research process. And if I can, I'll try to just to make sure that I make one of those videos anyway. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just setting my timer. Should have done this before the video started, but I don't want to do multiple takes. So, um, okay, so here we are. We're into the second section. We've gotten another example of athletes, uh, specifically uh, women of color uh, in, in college athletics at this point. And we have some spaces we can be research in. So some of that done, I'm a stuff in the... Uh, and what happened in that scenario, you can probably find that on just AP websites, meaning that you can look at uh, things like uh, newspapers and probably just Google that and find some pretty good stuff. I'm sure like ESPN, which is really verifiably, I mean, there are good sources as well as anything else. Um, so it won't be like an academic source, but it will still be able to uh, provide you with something to better understand it. Before I go into the rest of the section, one of the things I want to talk about with research really quickly with you is what the larger idea behind it is. And the idea is that so it all, it's all premised on um, a bit of a stretch, which is that you would want to better understand this book and or you would want to present this book to somebody else who has read it but maybe doesn't understand its full effect or the purpose of its existence. And your job is, you're stepping in there to say, well, have you, you maybe you don't know much about you know, X or Y. And these are subjects and ideas that when you study them and you present them in, in correlation with the book, they get a better sense of why this book is important. What is it dealing with? And what are some of the elements that they can better grasp? So really research is about opening it up to your own perspective. It's no different than in, um, I mean, obviously it's different in, in specificity, but it's no different than when you uh, like an album or something and you kind of research that album and you look up, you know, who was the guest producer on the track that you liked and who was the guest vocalist and what is their backstory? <clears throat> You're just trying to better understand it. And now, and you can go that direction and keep it pretty surface, or you can look at like, I mean, if you're interested in it, like musical theory, right? You can look and see really how the song was made, um, what sort of elements they were using, what they're sampling from, and really like go down that rabbit hole. And that's what you're trying to do with the book, is just to go down the rabbit hole and see what you can discover and better understand the, the genre and the grasp of what's going on. So we move back into the text, and I'm sorry I don't really have screenshots of the whole thing, but I hope you have it. I'm on page 43. And I'm just going to kind of walk through a few things. The first thing that I notice as I walk through this is that though this is a somewhat longer section, not, not incredibly long, I have toward the very end, I have this. I have our, our, our piece of art, which is actually mentioned earlier um, as an example of uh, something she's talking about. And um, everything else is relatively a short amount of text. So this isn't a very visually... Uh, heavy laden one as some of the texts are, but uh, some of the sections are, but this is important. And in fact, it gets two full pages of a spread. Page 43, um, a, new, a new vignette, right? When a woman you work with calls you by the name of another woman you work with, it is too much of a cliche not to laugh out loud with a friend beside you who says, oh no, she didn't. Still in the end, so what? Who cares? She had a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Okay, and then in the next stanza, it says in paragraph, yes, and in your mail, the apology note appears referring to our mistake. Um, and so this is another story, another little uh, scenario, an anecdote, where the idea is that because both of the women are women of color, they have been mistaken for one another. Now, the scenario that, that we're faced with again in this book isn't so much saying that woman who did that, right, who referenced it, who then would later say our mistake, and then that's in quotes. It isn't necessarily saying that person committed an actively racist act. What it's saying is that, or what it's presenting, I should say, is that the speaker has no other way to interpret that. Like, it, is it a mistake? Of course it's a mistake. Um, the fact that the lady calls it our mistake makes it, as she says, apparently your own invisibility is the real problem causing her confusion. This is how the apparatus she propels you into begins to multiply its meaning. What did you say? So we have that, that phrase again showing up. So again, it's very much like, here's this scene that feels so normal 
in the speaker's world that the repetition of this phrase, what did you say, becomes a refrain, not for poetic purpose, but because it is quite literally the question that keeps occurring in the life of these characters or in this character. Um, and so we see that repetition. And we see, again, a lot of stereotypes that, that could be researched here. What are the history of these stereotypes? What are the, uh, what are the, uh, the evidence behind these? What has led people culturally in the United States of America to have these divisions, to understand the world in this kind of way? Um, why does the pronoun matter so much in our mistake? I mean, these are great questions to ask yourself. This idea about invisibility um, causing confusion, you know, Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man, which is a, just a text that, that everyone should read. It's a, an amazing book um, and, and absolutely worth your time. And, and this text references that, and I think it's worth looking into. But we have a lot of the, the elements that we've seen in this, in this section already developing. Notice in some ways, we've sort of moved away from the athletes a little bit, and now we're sort of dealing with sort of what she uses a word earlier that says quotidian. I think that's either in this section or in the one right before it. And quotidian means um, daily boring tasks. Boring isn't necessarily true, but basically just stuff you do every day that you probably don't really um, give a lot of meaning to, just repetitious acts that you have. And she's sort of talking about how race operates in that, in that space as well, how, how what one group may think of as quotidian, or daily and mundane, another group may see as actively um, against, right? As, as propelling uh, racism and supremacy. So a new story. At the end of a brief phone conversation, you tell the manager you are speaking with that you will come by his office to sign the form. So commerce is in this, and we can definitely do some research thinking about like um, race and commerce, race and, and ownership, like what are the history of that? There's a you know, as I'm sure you probably heard in the news, like the Tulsa massacre, right? Like, what was that about? What was that? Um, what was the? What was going on besides just like the Klan it being incredibly racist and terrible? Like, what was that scene? What were they driven by? It's a very capitalist um, thing. If you haven't watched the Watchmen, Watchmen, which isn't the only place that you should know this historical reference, but they do. Um, uh, I think a, well, they do an interesting job presenting that very important historical fact. So anyway, commerce is being brought up in that. When you arrive and announce yourself, he blurts out, I didn't know you were black. And so if I'm close reading this, I'm gonna look at this word blurts uh, on page 44, uh, mainly because like that word really jumps out and it's, there's, there's, a, there's a definition for that word. It doesn't, it's a surprise, it's a shock from our speaker here and you know, from the person. And so, you know, it's a like, surprise. Oh, are you, how could this be happening basically, right? Um, and and so there's, there's, and here we get into this white space in the, uh, in the text, in this, in this blank area here, in this paragraph that stands and breaks. And in that space is, is this idea, I think, of the considered pause, of like what is the appropriate response to an inappropriate, unasked for um, racist moment. So what, in this split second of social interaction, um, what can be done? Right, and so the next thing says, I didn't mean to say that, he then says. So this is the person saying it back, like trying to recount it. We see this happen a lot too. I don't know what we can research with that, but maybe that can be um, something for one of the videos is like, what does this, this, what do we have, what do we understand about this retracting? We said a thing, or not we, but like this man said a thing and then comes back and tries to get it back. Now that the response, right, another break is, the response is allowed, you say. What he asks, you didn't mean to say that aloud. Your transaction goes swiftly after that. And I think there's a lot going on in this in terms of research ideas here. Um, I remember reading an article a number of years ago that was something, something roughly titled like the hidden, or something like the, the underground racism of the cultural elite. And basically it was just saying like, there's all of these ways that racism has now been um, codified into our humor that we can like watch it on sitcoms and television and everything. And like they're using some of these old racist tropes, but they're kind of making fun of them at the same time. So it seems like it's progress. But in fact, like part of the arguments article was like, that's not actually progress. It's just mainstreaming racism as something that can now be talked about ironically. 
Um, Bo Burnham has a couple of bits about that as well that I think are really well stated. Um, this is like talking about like the internal monologue being made external and it being focused on race. And again, it's about surprise. We keep seeing these stories about surprise. It might be an interesting follow-up as we, as we keep going with this. So we, we don't need to go through each and every one. We certainly can, and I'm happy to. I don't mean to jump through um, any of them, but, the, but what we start to see, of course, is that each and every one of these um, next scenes, and so let me just kind of briefly uh, go through them and then I'll end the video. So on page 45, um, there's a person with multiple degrees. So education is throughout this, if, if you've been uh, paying attention to it. There's people within education, academia, they keep saying stupid things, like we should look into like what is race and uh, the higher level institutions, like how is that being held? Um, that could be really an interesting place to study. Um, and an important one, because you're currently enrolled in a college, like you should know, like what is the history of it? I didn't know, uh, the quote is, I didn't know black women could get cancer. So here's just like a biological ignorance that we're completely unaware of. The next page, um, they're talking about a photograph of the speak of the you and the photograph, the, this person says that you looked angry in a, in a photograph. And your understanding was that with the photographer, you picked the one where you looked like the happiest and they read that as anger, right? So here's another moment of like, is that racist? Yes, I think that's racist. What do I get to respond with? Um, and in this one, there's a question. Somebody brings up a sabbatical question about like, um, that seems sort of geared toward this uh, affirmative action quote that, that's from earlier in the book, um, that one of the candidates who comes in bringing in that idea of like a double standard basically. Um, and then there's another on page 48, here's one about humor again. This is the short vignette on, um, on a, uh, this idea about context, which is back to code switching as well. And in context, this person saying like, you uh, others out in public and not among friends. So the way humor works is that it, it has to be contextually significant. How does it fit within the scene? Um, and there's there's a few more pages until we get to the um, to the artwork. But I'll pause this here and I'll use this uh, to kind of the next place. So if you've noticed, like a lot of what we've been doing this with this video is is thinking about there's a bunch of information we can go look up. I had put on the syllabus the other day as well. Childish Gambino's This Is America which if you've never watched it, it's a good thing to watch and watching sort of the videos that explain it as this is a musical version of like what, what the representation of, um, of the commodified black body looks like in the arts, right? So it's very much about in the arts, um, but there's a lot of social commentary in that as well. And, and of course, there's everything that's happening right now in, in the literal world is also something else to pay attention to. Um, I'm going to start the next video talking about some of the information on the next page, but uh, hopefully what you're starting to hear is that there is a lot of places you can go and research um, in terms of ideas just to learn more. Uh, the process for researching has a lot to do with sitting in front of your laptop and, and reading or watching YouTube videos with people explaining cool stuff. So if you, if you know you're going to YouTube tonight, if that's, or if you're going to TikTok tonight or whatever you're going to do, I'm sorry I said TikTok like that. It's not really my generation. I should take it back. Um, you know, take 15 minutes of that and look up stuff about like John Henryism. Look up about uh, Judith Butler, who are about to look up that uh, issue with that with that Imus guy, right? Watch these things and see like see what you learn, see what, what comes out of this book, because the book's asking you to do that. All right, more coming soon. Hope you all having a good night. Stay safe, stay uh, wash your hands, all that good stuff. Bye, y'all.